العلم أشراف مطلب وطالبه لله أكرام من يمشي على قادم العلم نور مبين يستضيء به أهل السعادات والجهال في الظلم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد Welcome to part two of the series of the second series May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to benefit of that which we hear and help us to act upon and apply in our lifestyle that which we understand and benefit from So continuing inshallah ta'ala as we mentioned previously in the previous episode that we will inshallah embark on mentioning the adilla min al-kitab wa sunnah from the Book of Allah and the Sunnah of His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that highlight to us some of the uh, mentioning of the diseased heart. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He mentioned in the first verse that we will be dealing with here, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِن قَبْلِكَ مِن رَسُولٍ وَلَا نَبِيٍ إِلَّا إِذَا تَمَنَّا أَلْقَ الشَّيْطَانُ فِي أُمْنِيَّتِهِ فَيَنْسَخُ اللَّهُ مَا يُنْقِ الشَّيْطَانُ ثُمَّ يُحْكِمُ اللَّهُ آيَاتِهِ وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ حَكِيمٌ <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned in his verse in which he said that Allah azza wa jalla has never sent to a prophet nor those before them nor a mess- any prophets before them except that when they intended to try and recite the verses a shaitan would try and come and deter them from the correct meaning from the correct meaning of the verses or from relaying and conveying exactly how it was revealed unto them but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he blocks that which the shaitan comes with. فَيَنْسَخُ اللَّهُ مَا يُلْقِ الشَّيْطَانِ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he negates or he abrogates that which the shaitan has come with. ثُمَّ يُحْكِمُ اللَّهُ آيَاتِ Then Allah establishes the verses correctly. وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ حَكِيمٌ Allah is all-knowing, all-wise. Now this verse, the Mufassirun, they mentioned this descended upon, uh, or this was due to an incident that some of the ulama are مُخْتَرِفٌ fi. Some of the ulama have mentioned that, that this qissa has, um, uh, 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 and he has some problems or there's something problematic about this qissa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa verses and ayat as we know in stages. There was an incident in the Prophet sallallahu lifetime in which a verse was revealed and yet the shaitan had gotten or intervened in the revelation and cast some of the words in the mouth of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in which he mentioned praise of the idols, praise of the gods of the mushrikeen, in which he said, تِلْكَ الْغَرَانِيقَ الْعُلَىٰ وَإِنَّ شَفَعَتَهُنَّ لَتُرْتَضَىٰ That these are glorious objects, meaning these idols, and verily that their intercession for Allah, their interceding for Allah on behalf of us, is turtada, is something that's hoped. Now this is obviously clearly batil, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cast these verses away and abrogated it. Although some of the Mufassirin have mentioned that this qissa is not really authentic, but the majority or the predominant view is that it is authentic. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he done naskh, he abrogated these verses and we corrected the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And the Prophet was reproached by Jibreel alayhi salam in which he said, Jibreel said, why have you said because this wasn't part of the revelation that was revealed to you. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed just as the mushrikun were glorifying uh, or in a happy state of to what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa had uh, presumably said. Then Allah revealed the verses in Surah Al-Najm. He revealed the verses in Surah Al-Najm talking about Allah wal Uzza, the idols. And he cast blame and refuted and re- rebuked them. So this incident, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions this verse. لِيَجْعَلَ مَا يُلْقِ الشَّيْطَانُ فِتْنَةً لِلَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ وَالْقَاسِيَةِ قُلُوبُهُمْ That Allah, due to this incident, because of this incident, He may use this as a means to test, as a means to make a trial. لِلَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ For those who in their hearts is a sickness, the marad of shirk, and nifaq, and disbelief. وَإِنَّ الظَّالِمِينَ لَفِي شِقَاقٍ بَعِيدٍ وَلِيَعْلَمَ And also at the same time لِيَعْلَمَ مَا يُلْقِ الشَّيْطَةِ وَلِيَعْلَمَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ And so that those who have gathered and acquired knowledge they can understand and know أَنَّهُ الْحَقُّ مِنْ رَبِّهِمْ That this actually is the truth from their Lord meaning 
that the Quran and the Prophet Sallallahu is actually the truth from their Lord. It is the truth. This is the truth from their Lord. For you mean ubihi. So they believe in him. For yukhbita lahu kulubuhum. And their hearts tremble and become softened for him. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَهَادِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِلَىٰ صِرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ And Allah indeed, He guides those who believe to a straight path. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clarified, as Ibn Qayyim, He mentioned in Ighathatul Al-Hafam regarding His verse, as it has mentioned the diseased heart, He mentions, جَعَرَ اللَّهُ الْقُلُوبِ فِي هَذِهِ الْآيَةِ الثَّلَاثِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He categorized the hearts in three regarding this verse or this incident. قَلْبَيْنِ مَفْتُونَيْنِ Two hearts which are trowled by the incident that took place. وَقَلْبًا نَاجِحًا And a heart that is successful. فَالْمَفْتُونَانِ Those two hearts that are trialed. الْقَلْبُ الَّذِي فِيهِ مَرَضٌ The heart that has a sickness. وَالْقَلْبُ الْقَاسِ And a heart that is hard and eroded and rotten. وَالنَّاجِ الْقَلْبُ الْمُؤْمِنَ الْمُخْبِتُ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِ and the one that's successful, the heart that's successful is the one that's in humility to its Lord, in obedience to its Lord. It is the one that is soft and humble to its Lord, obedient and at peace and surrendering to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah mentioned that those who, this, this incident that Allah has allowed to take place, yani the shaitan, intruding into the revelation and the shaitan trying to throw his yani his whispers fi umniyati uh, in, in the heart of the Prophet ﷺ while he's receiving revelation and then Allah later on abolishing this this incident is a fitna for those who in their hearts is a disease already a mar of the shak they have the disease of doubts disbelief hypocrisy and defiance and arrogance but for those who believe they know after affair, the affair was settled, they know that this is the truth from their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah had abolished and cast away that which the devil has come with. So this is one of the verses, uh, and with a, well, this is one of the verses that has an incident attached to it that Allah has mentioned specifically. Those who in their heart is a disease. The other verse in which Allah said, قَاتِلُوهُمْ يُعَذِّبُهُمُ اللَّهُ بِأَيْدِيكُمْ وَيُخْزِهِمْ وَيَنْصُرُكُمْ عَلَيْهِمْ وَيَشْفِ صُدُورَ قَوْمٍ مُؤْمِنِينَ وَيُظْهِبَ غَيْظَ قُلُوبِهِمْ وَيَتُوبُ اللَّهُ عَلَى مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَاللَّهُ عَلِيمٌ حَكِيمٌ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned قَاتِلُوهُمْ Fight the mushrikeen يُعَذِّبُهُمُ اللَّهُ بِأَيْدِيكُمْ Allah he would punish them with your hands and he would disgrace them وَيَنْصُرُكُمْ عَلَيْهِمْ And he would support you from them. وَيَشْفِ قُلُوبَ وَيَشْفِ صُدُورَ قَوْمٍ مُؤْمِنِينَ وَيُذْهِبْ غَيْذَ قُلُوبِهِمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would cure the hearts. Al-Baghwi mentions in his tafsir على هذه الآية He says, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentioned and that he would help and alleviate the hearts of the believers أَدَاءَ قُلُوبِ قَوْمٍ that he will basically take away that the da, the disease and the sickness that they may, must have had in their hearts. And the reason is that they used to suffer punishments and persecution from the kuffar. And so they had some anger and resentment in their hearts for them. So this anger and resentment is a disease that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala identified in his verse. And so via that he said fight them so that Allah may punish them with your hands. And that he may give you victory. And that's so all what is in your heart of anger and hatred and this disease that's in your heart which is nonetheless a disease so that it can be relieved Al-Qurtubi in his tafsir of the verse he mentioned he said he goes this is an evidence that the hatred and the resentment that the, the believers had for the kuffar due to the persecution that it had intensed and it becomes severe and when a hatred and then a resentment becomes severe for an opponent or a person, then it becomes somewhat of a weight and a disease and a problem, a da. So that's why al we refer to it as da, yani da al da al qawmin. That was obviously inflicted by the kuffar, yani because enmity being in your heart is a disease. It is something that really shouldn't reside in a person's heart. You can, you may be affected. And you may hate someone 
but ultimately it being removed of your heart is best you living your life hate free yani the things that happen you can hate the people for the actions that they do you can hate actions but there's a level of hate that if it resides in your heart it can affect you negatively as al qurtubi he mentioned that he said that wa yudhhib ghaydha qulubihim dalilun ala anna ghaydhahum qad ishtaddat that their hatred became too severe their hatred became too severe so that's another ayah the um and ibn qayyim he mentioned regarding this ayah in ghathatul lahfam he said yani fal ghaydhu yu'lam al qalb this intense hatred that a person has he says yu'lam al qalb it actually hurts and affects the heart he says ودواؤه في شفاء غيره ودواؤه في شفاء غيره فإن شفاءه بحق اشتفى فإن شفاءه بحق اشتفى وإن شفاءه بظلم وباطل زاده مرضا من حيث ظن أنه يشفيه. He says uh, and this hatred is only cured with the cure of hatred which is that it's cured with the truth and if it's cured with falsehood then it will bring more problems to the person even though he may assume and think that he's cured uh, he says وَكَذَلِكَ الْغَمُّ وَالْحَمُّ وَالْحَزَنُ and he says also like that is sick uh, يعني worries grief and despair <clears throat> he goes they are from the amrad al-qurub as well يعني a person may be worried they may be they may at some point in their life have despair but this is something that if it resides in your heart for a, uh, a prolonged period such as hatred as we mentioned and any yani, sadness then he can definitely take a toll on the believer so it is from the diseases of the heart so you can see in that verse as well that we can take and benefit that the diseases of that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned specifically a specific type of disease which was in the case of the verse al-ghayth which was the enmity that the believers had in their heart fi dhikri he also ibn qayyim also um, also there are many verses in the quran where Allah specifically mentioned the actual term marad like fi qulubihim maradun fazadahum Allah marada in regards to the munafiqun in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in their hearts is a disease so that Allah increased their their disease meaning their their, their nifaq their hypocrisy and, and that sickness that they have and also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said ya nisa an nabiy lastun ka ahadin min an nisa in ittaqaytun fala takhda'na bil qawl fa yatma'a alladhi fi qalbihi marad فيطمع الذي في قلبه مرض وقلنا قولا معروفا هي الله سبحانه وتعالى is advising the nisa and nabi the believing uh, the, or the wives of the prophet and also this is a proof for and used in relation to all the believing females Allah said to them لستن كأحد من النساء you are like none other women no other women إن اتقيتن في في الله فلا تخضعنا then do not make your voice يعني بالقول فلا تخضعنا بالقول don't make your voices يعني alluring and softened to sort of allure فيقطع or don't make it softened so that perhaps the one in his heart in the male or the men that are listening to her in their heart perhaps there is a disease in his heart there is perhaps a disease and that he may be enticed by this softened speech of the woman So when a woman is discussing or talking to a man when she has the reason to talk not that she's just freely just talking to men but she has the reason and there's a necessity or a purpose then and she's discussing with then she is to speak as Allah said wa qulna qawlan ma'rufa but rather say a straight and just statement don't lo- soften your voice because perhaps some men and a lot of men in that case their hearts have they have a sickness disease meaning the sickness he says ibn qayyim he says fayqta man fi qalbihi marad ash-shahawat so that perhaps it may enter the one in his heart is the disease of ash-shahawat disease of uh, yani immoral uh, behavior and and, and 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 you know the uh, infatuation of illicit behavior this type of person or any men for that matter or so women are ordered by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but are ordered by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to speak straight and get to the point of what they need to say when they speak into the opposite gender also then there's another statement where allah subhanahu there's another verse where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentioned la illam yantahi al-munafiqun wal ladhina fi qulubihim maradun wal murjifun fi al-madinati lanughriyannaka bihim 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, if they don't decease, meaning those munafiqoon who are in Medina causing problems and rumors, بهم, uh, and those who in their heart is a sickness, those who in their hearts is a sickness, if they don't decease, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will deal with them. Ta'ala, and Allah also says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he also mentions in another verse, in highlighting to us a type of people who have a disease, uh, are those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned وَمَا جَعَلْنَا أَصْحَابَ النَّارِ إِلَّا مَلَائِكَةً وَمَا جَعَلْنَا وَمَا جَعَلْنَا عِدَّتُهُمْ إِلَّا فِتْنَةً لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لِيَسْتَيْقِنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا لِيَسْتَيْقِنَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ وَيَرْتَادَ الَّذِينَ وَيَزْدَادَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِيمَانًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that they would have not made the angels who are the keepers of the fire. Illa, we have not made the keepers of the fire except angels. And we have not made the angels of the keepers of the fire except a particular number. And this particular number had become a source of fitna for those who disbelieve. And those who, uh, those who uh, have yani, uh, utul kitab or the people of the kitab, they increase in iman. وَلَا يَرْتَابَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابُ وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ And so that the believers and those who have acquired the book, the people of scripture, يعني the Jews and the Christians, so that they don't have any doubt in regards to this religion. وَلْيَقُولَ الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ مَرَضٌ But those who have a sickness in their heart and the kuffar, they say, مَاذَا أَرَادَ اللَّهُ بِهَذَا مَثَلًا Why has Allah made this an example and a similitude? And they have a sickness in their heart and it has been a source of trial for them. And Allah knew this. But he had let this and made this apparent. Yeah, need the number of the angels that Allah released. As Ibn Qayyim, he mentioned uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he made iddat al-malaika al-muwakkilina bin nar tis'at ashar. He made them 19. Allah azza wa jal made the angels who are the keepers of the fire, the hellfire, he made them 19. And he says, فَذَكَرَ subhanahu wa ta'ala khamsa hikamin. Ibn Qayyim, he mentioned there's five wisdoms that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned. From this ayah, fitnatul kuffar. The first one is that it's a trial for the kuffar. al kitab, and it is a yaqeen, a source of increasing uncertainty for the ahl al kitab. So they realize this is actually the truth, and this confirms that which came before, that this is actually in truth, and that they could either submit or reject. Yeah, and it's a trial for them, or it increases them in yaqeen. وَيَزْدَادُ إِيمَانَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَزِيَادَةُ إِيمَانَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And it increases the believers in faith. Because the believers, they'll submit to this and it won't be a source of fitna. Why? They have the asal of iman in their heart, the belief and the faith of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, in, well, so, it does, so it doesn't uh, make any difference whether Allah tells them it was 19 angels or 20 angels, right? وَإِنْقَاءِ uh, الْغَيْبِ عَنِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَأَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ and he said and as for the fifth that it is basically حَيْرَةٌ لِلْكُفَّارِ it is حَيْرَةُ الْكُفَّارِ وَمَنْ قَبْلَهُ حَيْرَةُ الْكُفَّارِ وَمَنْ فِي قَلْبِهِ مَرَضٌ it is a confusion a sort of confusion for the kuffar and the one who in their hearts is a sickness and a disease disease of shak the disease of uh, no knowledge a lack of knowledge and the disease of doubts and kufr that they already had uh, based in their heart that this now verse as of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the number of angels this becomes a sort of uh, a trial and a tri tri tribulation for them so that's another in ayah that we can benefit benefit and along attached with it an incident that highlights to us some of the sicknesses that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned as for it relates to the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam there are many hadith that can be either directly or indirect or explicitly or implicitly taken from Allah, from the ahadith of the Prophet Sallallahu But one, we will stick to one inshallah ta'ala due to time. Uh, from them is the hadith of uh, Jabir ibn Abdullah in, in, uh, which can be found in Sahih Abi Dawood of al Albani, in which he said, خَرَجْنَا فِي سَفَرٍ فَأَصَابَ رَجُلًا مِنَّا حَجَرٌ فَشَجَّهُ فِي رَأْسِهِ ثُمَّ احْتَمَلًا فسأل أصحابه فقال هل تجد لي رخصة في التميم في التيمم فقالوا ما ما نجد لك رخصة وأنت تقدر على الماء فغسل فمات فلما قدمنا على النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أخبر بذلك 
فقال قتلوه قاتلهم الله الا سالوا اذ لم يعلموا فانما شفاء العي السؤال انما كان يكفيه ان يتيمم ويعصر او يعص او يعصب شك موسى او يعصب على جرحه خرقه ثم يمسح عليها ويغسل سائر جسده This is an incident in which Jabir رضي الله عنه reports that there was a man who he had they were while they were traveling he had incurred an injury suffered an injury to his head it was a wound that was a, a gash the, a gash like wound so then he said uh, so this man slept and he had a wet dream and so he when he woke up he asked istafta meaning he asked and sought fatwa and sought a verdict from the rest of the sahaba or from some of the sahaba that were with him on that on that journey and he said do i have the concession of tayammum they said to him, no you don't because you've got water so you have to do ghusl meaning take a bath you have to take a bath and do ghusl so the man did that the water entered into the, entered into his wound and he died so then the news got back to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said qataluhu they killed him then he said why didn't they just ask ala inna ma shifa'u li he said that verily if in if if lam ya'lamu fa inna ma shifa'u li as-su'al fa inna ma shifa'u li as-su'al for indeed the cure to the sicknesses of ignorance is to ask the cure he mentioned to the sickness and disease of ignorance is to ask so here we benefit and we understand that lack of knowledge lack of not knowing the book of allah and the sunnah is messenger or the ahkam related to a person's life that it is actually a disease so people who are ignorant of the ahkam of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifically those basic rulings those things that are uh, uh, يعني, occur and reoccur in the person's life constantly such as the salah such as يعني, ahkam uh, and wudu such as يعني, uh, hajj such as giving zakah these issues a person must know specifically if it relates to them like in the case of zakah if a person has the money and the ability and he's reached the nisab then they have to pay they have to know how to pay and how to yani give the zakah more so than the one who doesn't have any money or earnings so this is a disease a person who doesn't have knowledge is actually a sick individual and a person who's suffering from a disease so they are to go and seek the cure to that disease so i hope with this we've gained some understanding in retrospect to the diseased heart and how allah and allah has mentioned in certain incidences and affairs so inshallah ta'ala we will in the next episode be the go to our next subject which is that we start to now talking up talk about what constitutes a diseased heart how we know what a diseased heart is because everybody has problems in their life but how do you know when you're actually suffering from a disease so that you can later on go to cure it which is the next following topic which is the signs or which is the next following topic which is the cure and the traits the traits and the cures to those sicknesses and diseases ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure all our hearts from illnesses uh, ailments and trials and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our hearts from falling into the pitfalls of the shayateen the mankind and the jinn of them wallahu ta'ala a'lam subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk